challenging convention it really focuses on the work of four British female artists and it features the work of Vanessa Bell, Gwen John, Laura Knight and Dodd Proctor. All of the artists were born towards the end of the 19th century, so within the Victorian era, but they were developing their careers and working during the early decades of the 20th century. A time of huge change, both in terms of wider society, so the artists all lived through war and economic crises, but also it was a time of change for women in society. There had been very few celebrated women artists, so it's really about highlighting how this generation of women artists born in Britain were beginning to really make strides in what was undoubtedly a male-dominated art world at that time. I think bringing the four artists together is really interesting because they were near contemporaries. They had some similar experiences in terms of coming to the fore as women artists at that time. So all four of the artists benefited from an art school education, which made a huge difference to their ability to progress. Laura Knight said that it had been a lack of education that had really held women artists back before that time, in her opinion. By the time that these artists were working, change was really starting to happen, and there were increasing numbers of women artists coming out of art school and trying to forge careers. Um, and it's something that these four women all did with different levels of success, but all of them achieved success. Vanessa Bell is an artist who's best known as a member of the Bloomsbury group of artists and intellectuals. And that group of figures also included Vanessa Bell's husband, Clive Bell, a critic, her sister, who was the novelist Virginia Woolf, and also Duncan Grant, the artist, Really within the exhibition, what we want to focus on is her practice as a painter. She was probably at her most experimental as a painter um, during the 1910s, and there are various examples of her work at that time on show. The tub, which is a huge nude that we've borrowed from Tate. It's such a bold, modern, striking painting. Even the subject matter of a female nude would still ruffle feathers when in the hands of a female artist, although male artists had obviously been painting female nudes for centuries. An artist who Vanessa Bell admired was actually Gwen John, the Welsh artist. And Gwen John and Vanessa Bell, I think, absorbed the influence of particularly French post-impressionist painting, although they're very different as artists. So they were both looking at the work of figures like Cezanne. Gwen John actually settled permanently in Paris after her art school training. And so of the four artists, she was the only one to do that. Gwen John is remembered for her interior paintings and her paintings of women in particular. A favourite work of mine in the show is her painting A Corner of the Artist's Room in Paris, which gives a glimpse of her Paris apartment where she lived. It's such a quiet, but such an evocative painting. I feel like there's so much meaning beneath the surface beyond just the interior that she's showing. In the exhibition, we also include the work of Laura Knight, who might be the best known of the four to regular visitors to the lane, because we have very good holdings of Laura Knight in our own collections. Laura Knight probably had the least privileged background of the four artists featured in the exhibition, but she became the most popularly successful as an artist. She had the most establishment success, becoming a dame. She was the first woman to be elected a full Royal Academician, which was a huge accolade. She was a very prolific painter and she painted a hugely diverse range of subjects, and which you can see in works like Barrage Balloon Coventry, which we have on loan to us from the Imperial War Museum. Laura Knight made this painting during World War II and it shows a group of women hoisting up a barrage balloon and I think it's such a huge and detailed and vigorous painting that people really enjoy looking at it. Laura Knight was good friends with another artist who's included in the exhibition, Dodd Proctor. And Dodd Proctor and Laura Knight met in Newlyn in Cornwall, where there was an artist's colony, which had a big impact on both of their practices. But Dodd Proctor actually spent most of her life in Newlyn, so it's particularly closely associated with her work. 
And she's an artist who rose to fame really during the 1920s when her paintings became very well known. And in particular, her painting, Morning, caused something of a sensation when it was exhibited at the Royal Academy. It was voted Picture of the Year, and it was eventually purchased for the nation by the Daily Mail newspaper. So for a while, Dodd Proctor was one of the best known artists working in Britain, which makes it all the more incredible that she's perhaps the least known of the four artists now and isn't particularly well remembered. Any exhibition like this one, which involves a large number of loans, and this show has over 30 lenders, um, is quite complicated to organise. Really, it was about practical considerations of where we would be able to borrow paintings from, but also representing each artist in a way that would highlight important aspects of their work. I thought it was important to give each of the artists featured a kind of zone in the exhibition. So when it came to choosing the wall colours, I actually thought about it in terms of colours that I could see within the canvases. So for example, for the Vanessa Bell section of the exhibition, we've used quite an unusual pink. And that really came from the fact that I noticed this earthy pink running through most of the canvases. And I thought it would be interesting to see how the painting sat against that colour. I think audiences will respond to this exhibition in different ways, which reflects actually the fact that it is quite a broad ranging exhibition. Although the four artists included in the show were contemporaries and were all British artists, their work has so much variety. So I hope that people get a flavor of that. There is a whole history of British art relating to women artists that doesn't always get the recognition that it should. And um, so we keep trying to put the spotlight on these artists and make sure that people know about them. And I think the fact that they were able to achieve the success they did at the time that they did is actually really inspiring.